you are creating the worst toxic men in the universe. And then those same people will wonder why in the normal real world, people think they're because no one wants to be around that. No one wants to be hit on or be in a relationship with a dude who's just like, yeah, you know, women be shopping, you know, they're all gold diggers, all of them, these gold digging, blah. No one wants to be around that. That, that sounds horrible. So you are actually just taking advantage of men by taking their hard earned cash. And on top of that, turning them into dudes in the process. Oh, I thought saying Andrew Taint was uh, just too, too lowbrow, but I see people are already saying in chat. So you know what? When you go low, I go low too. Getting <laughs> uh. a PhD from Hustler University, also known as Hustlerversity by those of us with the grind set. It was created by this guy. I'm top two. You think you're smart? I bought this coin and it's going up. You could have bought any coin and it went up in the last year. The matrix was broken. Hustle University is the greatest thing that exists on the face of the planet for people who are trying to escape the yeah, matrix. The Become rice. Hustle's University. Welcome oh. to the metaverse. Inject it into your brain. You can skip university, you can buy my program, and I guarantee you, you will know everything you need to know. Have you ever seen a college professor with an S63 and a McLaren and a Lambo and an no. Aston Martin standing next to No, the they're broke ass. No, you've never seen any of what? this. I know how to make cash. Now, Damn. if you're wondering why I'm enrolling in a college that looks like it was started by the son of Mr. Worldwide, it's actually <laughs> quite simple. Hustleversity was started by Andrew Tate, a guy that basically no one knew about until six months ago and is now somehow more searched than Mr. Beast, Kanye West, or most shocking of all, even the Island Boys, who I know I thought would have a career forever. But some The Island Boys? No. Oh, no. Oh, we lost a couple legends with that one. Such are the tides of fame, I suppose. And I guess the real question is, how did this happen and why? Well, Andrew attributes his meteoric success to a change in business strategy. I put together a particular strategy about six months ago because I decided to step up my overall exposure because of a new product I launched. I run an online school that teaches people how to make money online. I changed my approach towards social media and I ended up absolutely everywhere. Now, if you're wondering what business strategy that is, or even what business this guy's in, turns out he's one of these male success gurus who will be your surrogate father essentially for a fee. And the program he runs is called Hustleversity, where he teaches you how to make- Oh, so we know some of the prices now. Passive. Oh, sorry, this is the increase in the money you'll be making. Never mind. All right. Make fast money if you'll only pay $50 a month. And one of these fast money methods turns out to be selling Hustleversity to new people by posting clips of him, Andrew Tate. And I gotta be honest. I mean, applying multi-level marketing to the whole uh, pickup artist slash fast cash crypto stuff. I mean, that not something I thought would work out. And now it's doing wonders for him. It's, it's basically getting a whole bunch of people to market you. Because of this, it kind of created this pyramid scheme where there was a flood of TikTok videos and biased reviews saying that Andrew Tate is the one true savior that will save you from poverty. He's basically Morpheus from the Matrix, and that's not even me calling him that. He calls himself that. I get called Morpheus a lot. We are living inside of the Matrix, and I am Morpheus. He says he wants to wake you from your mental prisons, all by selling you a program that sounds like what high school dropouts used to put as their education. You know what? He might not be wrong, because if he saw the rest of the Matrix, he would understand that Morpheus was actually fooled himself into perpetuating a system of control. So, yeah. Patient status on Facebook. Attended the School of Hard Knocks and graduated Hustleversity with a PhD. Wait, you're a doctor? No, that's the pimping hose degree. Which is something, mm. by the way, I didn't make up. It's a course that Andrew Tate himself sells. Oh. But I don't think you want to take advice from someone who's in the middle of a human investigation <laughs> and that's not even to mention accusations of beating women or him allegedly admitting that one of his businesses was quote a total scam but none of this has stopped over a hundred thousand people from signing up for hustleversity which at 50 bucks a month nets him five million dollars a month Damn. despite it being a repackaged version of the same male guru grift that we've seen over a hundred times like tom vu john Crestani, dan Locke, grant cardone need i go on What's the difference with Tate? See, despite his alleged criminality, toxicity, psychopathy, 
Andrew does have one undeniable skill that seems to be responsible for most or all of his success so far. He's just really entertaining. I hate everyone equally. Don't come at me and call me sexist or racist or any of these things. I hate everyone. I don't care if you're black, white, straight, gay, man, and woman. I hate you anyway. I do know how to administer CPR. However, I will not administer CPR unless you're a hot female. If you're some fat dude and you just had a heart attack and I don't really know you. Is that lady billing you and you back and rearrange your bones? Why is it being massaging for a full hour straight, bro? I have a lot of muscle. It's, it's painful to carry around. It's a two hour massage. You see, guys, modern influencers are slowly learning that we live in a post-consequence world. With people like Jake Paul running around just serially scamming people and nothing happening to them, people are starting to realize that the only real currency is attention. Like, the worst thing that's going to happen to you is not that you go to jail. The worst thing that's going to happen to you is you become irrelevant. And this is what separates Andrew Tate from a lot of the fake gurus I've covered in the past and makes him much more effective and maybe dangerous at what he does. And in that way, he's got more in common with someone like Alex Jones. We're gonna beat your ass. You just get that through your stinking traitorous heads. Then he does with someone like Dan Locke or Grant Cardone. Both Jones and Tate operate sort of- so It's basically Alex Jones, but for women hating. Yeah, if you, if you wanted Alex Jones, but more sexist. Like, not that Alex Jones isn't sexist and doesn't hate women, but now you get that plus broke. You get all that, but it's going to be sold to you. So, yeah, you'll you'll learn to hate women more and, and maybe lose some money along the way. Uh, so, there you go. Sort of on this playbook where entertainment is king. They say a bunch of outlandish statements that builds attention, and then once they're the crazy guy, all they have to do is say a few basic things that everyone agrees with, and then their audience suddenly thinks they're a genius. I mean, everyone has seen this with Alex Jones, right? You have modern philosopher Joe Rogan seemingly saying that he predicts everything. Alex is right about far more than he's wrong. Mm. When in reality, Alex Jones is predicting everything sort of all the time. So of course he's gonna be right some of the time. And it's sort of the same with Tate. He said, well, if you are, you know, a fan of Knowledge Fight, you'll learn that his prediction ratio, it's very, very low. Uh, he'll say, you know, 100 or 150 random statements every show, and the vast bulk of them are complete and utter nonsense. But there may be like a crumb or two of reality inside there. And then next show, that's what he focuses on. You know, he can be like, oh, there's levitating uh, goats that are going to feed off your brain worms. And also, uh, you know, there might be a 2% change in the cost of uh, gasoline. And the next week, it's like, okay, uh, the, the levitating goats never happened, but there was a 2% change in the cost of gasoline. So then the next show, well, folks, as I predicted, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say that it, uh, I have some kind of superpower, but as I told you, and you all now know, that 2% change in gasoline was exactly as I called it. And then everyone forgets about the levitating goats. They're going to eat the brain worms. They don't even think about that one. But now it just looks like Alex Jones is always right. It's, it's just, it's a magic trick. Confirmation bias to the extreme. So much. Like in one segment, he'll say something outlandish like, Men should be able to cheat on women, but it doesn't work the other way around because that's disgusting. Let's not pretend that male loyalty and female loyalty are the same thing. But loyalty mm. is loyalty. No, but they're not the same thing, are they? However, I would not see my infidelity. I gotta say, he's <laughs> completely choosing not to look at her and look at the camera instead. That's an odd choice for an interview, eh? You're like talking to someone and it's like, you get asked a question, you're like, okay. Well, I don't think about that. I'll just think about smashing that puss, yeah? as nearly anywhere near even 1% as disgusting as female infidelity. And he knows that's gonna get him clicks and piss people off. But then we'll say in a segment right after, oh, I believe in true love between a man and a woman. I believe there should be more love. I think relationships are a beautiful thing. I think that the synergy between men and women are a beautiful thing if they are correctly collaborated. I think that that's what makes society function. I think that's what makes the world function. I think that men and, men and women falling in love and having children and having families are very, very beautiful things. Well, who doesn't agree with that? And he'll yeah. talk to like men's issues. He'll talk about how lonely men are. Most men are absolutely not really invisible. This is the truth about masculinity, right? It's very easy for women to sit here and complain about the top 2% of men because I've dealt with this guy, he's arrogant, blah, 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 blah. Most men don't even exist. They send 10,000 DMs and never even get read, let alone replied to. And so this makes it so that the many people who are trying to say, ah, oh, Andrew's just crazy, they don't see the full con that he's running because the crazy is only half of the game. Because eventually people hear the other half, the basic stuff that's obvious and go, well, he's not totally crazy. And people just eventually kind of go down the Tate rabbit hole where they think, 
you know, maybe I can leave the matrix and get girls, jets, and Bugattis. Maybe I just need to become financially free. How do I do it? Who's looking out for me? And that's where Hustleversity enters the picture. Hell and look, yeah. I know we just covered a lot, right? But to understand this next part, to understand Hustleversity, it requires a deep understanding of Andrew Tate's appeal. So we can see why Hustleversity is on the one hand so popular, despite being so bad. Because otherwise, this whole video is anticlimactic and confusing. Because when I first joined Hustleversity, I thought it's got to be different, right? It's it, to have this many. And, and before we get all the secrets revealed, I do want to say on the record, Andrew Tate's style of appealing to men, maybe lost men, or maybe men who don't have other, you know, people in their lives who are trying to guide them into things like, how do I pick up women? How do I be successful? How do I make money? In my opinion, they kind of hate men. I'll be honest, I'm talking about the Andrew Tates, okay? They, yes, they hate women as well, but they also hate men because they want to take advantage of men first off and also give them the worst fucking possible advice. If you're going to train a whole bunch of like young impressionable boys into believing that the cause of a lot of these problems are the fact that women are scammers, uh, they just want your cash, uh, you gotta treat them like garbage, uh, shit all over them kind of stuff. Well, at the same time, you are creating the worst toxic men in the universe. And then those same people will wonder why in the normal real world, People think they're fucking assholes because no one wants to be around that. No one wants to be hit on or be in a relationship with a dude who's just like, yeah, you know, women be shopping, fucking, oh, they're all fucking gold diggers, all of them, these gold digging bitches, blah. No one wants to be around that. That, that sounds fucking horrible. So you are actually just taking advantage of men by taking their hard earned cash and on top of that, turning them into shittier dudes in the process. Many people paying every month. They have to have things that you just can't learn for free, right? Wrong. Once again, I'm disappointed because I joined this month and have been going through the classes, which is basically all of the same boring topics all of these guys teach about making money. It's all the most surface level stuff. He assigns a so-called professor to each skill and all of this all takes place inside of Discord servers. Oh, and so good. in these chat rooms where your instructors have a fraction of the charisma of Tate, you're supposed to commit yourself to these skill sets, which are super surface level because of course this- So you're not only not Andrew Tate, you're an Andrew Tate acolyte. Like you're out there being like, all right, so the good man Andre gave me all the skills to teach you how to be a fucking asshole. It all appeals to the lowest common denominator men who think answers can come from TikTok videos. And this is where it starts to hit you as you're scrolling through Discord threads that this kind of was all a big bait and switch. I mean, think about it. You've been told you're going to escape the matrix. You're going to take the red pill. Mm. What you end up doing in this course is sort of learning how to run an Amazon side hustle for Jeff Bezos. Like, no offense, <laughs> you're not breaking the matrix. You work for the richest guy in the world. Like, <laughs> That's one of the get rich quick schemes. Start an Amazon store. <laughs> like, I hate to break it to everyone. I don't want to give away his secrets for free here. You could do that right now if you want. You don't, you don't need any special skill set. It allows anyone to start their own store. You can go right now and sell products on Amazon if you want to. Yeah, maybe the secret spice is to like get a handful of other people who are also in the program to give your products some like great reviews. But to do that, they do have to buy your products. So are we just gonna have a forced feedback loop where we all buy each other's products, give each other five stars and have this uh, fucking side hustle? By the way, it's not an easy thing to run a successful like own. supply and chain style store on a regular basis in an incredibly saturated market in like a fucking uh, system that is looking to destroy you. Amazon is not good to Amazon suppliers. They universally complain about that. Amazon takes advantage of Amazon suppliers in every conceivable way. It's the worst possible way for you to get your like start in that specific field if that's something you want to get into. Imagine but it's only one eight of the secrets. Okay, sorry. I, I don't want to ruin the rest of the secrets. I didn't know that was going to be one of them, though. That's like, that's astonishing. That's absolutely like, uh, would you like to become a literary giant? Well, get your foot in the door by writing and publishing your own books on the Amazon marketplace where everyone else does this exact thing. How you'll get noticed, we don't know. But just, it, it's up to you. How much Sigma you have in you, how much grind set you're willing to do. That's what it comes down to. Holy beer, Dragon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Morpheus gives Neo the red pill and says, hey, have you ever day traded before? <laughs> it doesn't stop there either. Like you've been told you're going to be rich, right? I guarantee you will make money with this system. Hold on tight. We're about to get rich. 
but Hustlers University sort of changes the rules and definitions once you're inside. Like they have this cash quadrant of time and cash where you're either time poor or cash poor, time rich, cash poor, cash rich, time poor. You get the idea. It kind of feels like odd men, odd men, you know, create soft times. Um, and what they define cash rich as is very telling. They define it as having $5,000, which by that definition, guys, I'm proud to say I'm cash rich. Now, guys, look, having $5,000 is great, but you ain't rich, right? The lifestyle we've been sold on here is exotic Bugattis, not extra Starbucks biscottis. By the way, I mean, yeah, if, if he's like, you'll become as rich as me, you'll be able to buy and afford $250,000 cars, plural cars. These cars will have exorbitant maintenance costs. You'll have to take them to very specific dealerships and the parts, oof, the parts alone cost the amount that regular cars do. But don't worry, you'll have plenty of them. I mean, am I crazy here? Like, I feel like most people who joined this discord want olive Lamborghinis and they're sort of getting olive garden fettuccine. And this weird disconnect is everywhere, where Andrew Tate is practically screaming how great Hustlers University is on the one hand. Hustlers University is the greatest thing that exists on the face of the planet for people who are trying to escape the matrix. And yet, if you look at their own success screenshots that they provide, which is also a strange metaphor, okay? If you want to live in this weird, blissful, capitalist reality, you have to stay plugged into the Matrix. If you leave the Matrix, you have to join a rebellion. Did you want that? Their students are getting at best, like, very part-time income. Like, there are screenshots of $400 a month, maybe $2,000 <laughs> a month. <laughs> those are the examples they chose, which I'm not knocking the people who are doing this, like good for them. But unless you consider being cash rich, having $5,000 total in your bank. A dirty rebellion that does orgies. So yes, I mean, there's still orgies inside the matrix. I mean, I guess you could argue that you're not actually experiencing it. You're experiencing it in your mind. But yeah, I guess. Yeah. So if you want the if you want the giant, you know, techno orgies, you, you, you will have to leave. But you won't get you won't get fancy cars. I mean, you, you'll be a crew on an old ship like the Ebuchadnezzar. And it's probably not going to be the greatest of life that you're hoping for. You're going to have to kind of drink the goo porridge. You know, it has everything the body wants, but it's not, it's not steak. You know, I mean, one man actually went plugged back in just for the steak. Bank account, then this course doesn't seem to be getting people rich. It just teaches lost guys extremely basic skills that are free to learn, but charges them $50 a month for it so they can feel like they're escaping the matrix by working for Jeff Bezos. And this all brings us kind of back to the real reason for the success of Hustlers University, which is of course, Tate himself. But the irony is that once you join the university, you barely see Tate at all. He claims to be teaching the secrets to modern wealth creation, but the reality is, from what I saw, he was too busy marketing to actually be present in the Discord. And instead, you just had all these random people teaching you like e-commerce or freelancing or copywriting and investing. And this is kind of one of the reasons that I struggled to get good screenshots to show you guys from inside the course because it was so boring and bland. And that's why I decided to finally cancel my plans to become cash rich. And that's when I found out about the last trick Tate uses to get you to stay. Anyone who messes this up, annoys a professor, doesn't renew their subscription, their card cancels, any stupid then you're gonna regret it for a very long time because there's simply nowhere else to go. That's right, they tell you there's nowhere else to go besides Hustlers University. This is the only place where you're gonna learn not to be broke. And even the people who want to be part of it and simply don't have the money, Tate has told them that there's no second chances. They're going to uh, go back in the matrix if they miss a single payment. I had to unsubscribe to get my mother a birthday present, but I resubscribed the next month. I don't believe that. I don't believe you. And I also think if you... Oh, you fucking scumbags. What? That would like... Is, is one of the lessons don't love your mother is hate your mother part of it as well? Who were a member of, of Hustlers University for a month and you didn't make enough money to buy your mother a birthday present, you f***ed up. So you're probably gonna end up kicked Fucking out. betas. Like their two responses are, that's not true. And even if it is, it's your fault anyways, which I find amazing. It couldn't be the program, right guys? And you have to understand that for the people actually in the course, they're like deathly afraid of missing a payment because they've been told that if they do, guess where they're going? That's right, straight back in the matrix. 
In jail, they call it. And you'll see we have people in jail. So people who uh, don't renew, we don't kick you out. We put you in the jail and you sit there in your cell and you have no access to the money-making information. And we just flood you with all the endless wins. Every time someone wins, we show you. I mean, Andrew Tate hasn't reinvented anything. He's just doing it more successfully than a lot of fake gurus have in a while. But the result is the same as ever, where the real person getting rich, truly rich, is Andrew Tate. You're broke! Mm -hmm. You're f***ing poor! Well, that was good. Oh, here it is. Nice. This is roughly what one mother of a young 20-year-old Romanian woman told one news source after her daughter was found at the home of Andrew and Tristan Tate in Pipera, Romania. The Tate brothers denounced the Romanian media police reports insisting that two girls were found there, a 20-year-old Romanian woman and a 21-year-old American woman. In fact, Andrew Tate has vehemently denied every aspect of the case and said, no girls were found in my house and nobody was arrested. Andrew's TikTok shows clips from the brothers' podcast where they claim that the 21-year-old, they don't mention the Romanian woman, was actually just attending a party at their house. A girl had been at a party at my house and her boyfriend saw her Instagram stories and said, oh my God, you're at the Tate Brothers house in Romania. This was some American chick. And she went, uh, uh, no, I, I didn't want to come to this party. They, they made me come here and I'm not allowed to leave. She said that to her boyfriend. That's some excuse. The brothers found that hilarious, stating that her boyfriend was some, quote, was he one of these believe all females? Oh my God, my girlfriend's not kind of guys. She was she was, she was, one second, she wasn't even hot. She wasn't even hot. Ugly. Andrew and Tristan also claimed that the woman in question was caught on CCTV footage outside the home, taking a pizza delivery, clearly not held against her will in any way. The Romanian police, upon seeing this footage, were allegedly laughing along right with them. Therefore, this whole claim about them running a human trafficking ring is a joke, pathetic, and based on a wild misunderstanding, supposedly. The thing is, can we really say that this woman was free just because she was dancing and taking pizza deliveries? If she was American, then she was in an entirely different country as the Tate household was located in Romania. Maybe she's dancing because she feels she has to do exactly what Andrew wants, otherwise maybe she'll be harmed. Maybe the police don't take her seriously since Andrew has admitted to bribing Romanian law enforcement to get what he wants in the past. I probably shouldn't say this on the internet, but I'm going to. Romania is completely corrupt from head to toe, right? I have a very, very extensive network in Romania. I, I like to make this very clear. One of the reasons I love living there so much is because I'm at the very top echelon of society. So I did a deal with them to open them on the sly and pay bribes. So far, I was open for like the first month with bribes, but the bribe kept going up because it's Romania, right? The police chief would come, he wants some. It's just like everyone's got on the phone like, hey, this casino's still open. They'll pay you to go away. So before you know it, every five minutes, someone's in the door for money. There are so many other possibilities wow. here, but the Tate brothers and their followers have seemingly ignored them all in favor of she was getting pizza, so she's fine. But make no mistake, Andrew Tate is a vile human being. He moved to Romania largely because of their lax rules around the way women are treated, specifically how they have a difficult time pursuing assault or sexual assault charges. And Tate benefits from the corruption in the Romanian system. The number one reason he lists for moving is the hashtag MeToo era. People say, why did in Romania? And I explain my five reasons. One of them is the MeToo era. They go, oh, wait, I say, no, I'm not. But I like the idea of being able to just say, to, to do what I want. I like being free. How charming. Wait, what? <laughs> I No, no, I'm not a rapist. I just I like the ability if I wanted to, I could do that. That's that's the difference. It's 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 critical. But before I get too ahead of myself here, we have to learn who Tate is. Then we'll talk about his scams, his supposed values or lack thereof, and of course, his crimes. So, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're discussing Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate had a pretty decent career in kickboxing once upon a time. He won most of the fights he was in and was rated first in Europe in his weight class. He even allegedly endorsed the kickboxing equipment company Sidekick Boxing so much that people began to think he actually owned the business himself. 
Tate was not necessarily an A-list celebrity or anything, but he was making a name for himself, enough to get on the show Big Brother anyway, but that didn't last. In 2016, multiple clips of Tate abusing women emerged. In one video, he's asking a woman why she's covered in bruises. The woman, her face blurred, in a shockingly calm manner, might I add, tells the camera that she was beaten by Tate for misbehaving. Andrew clearly knows he's the one who gave her those bruises, interrogating her about it on camera, and then telling her to count the bruises is beyond, like, just scummy and gross. In a separate clip, another woman reveals that she has a tattoo of Tate's name on her crotch area. Tate beat, whipped, hit, and pushed her on camera. It's pretty hard to watch, but hey, the- Probably the last person in the world that should be giving hundreds of thousands of young, impressionable men ideas on how to be and act around women. Like, easily the worst. A woman says they were dating and it was just some kind of kinky roleplay, right? So that must make it okay. Newsflash, it doesn't. Andrew Tate told the tabloids he would never hit a woman, claiming a longer version shows them laughing and saying it doesn't hurt. Why not prove that this was just all fun and games instead of a literal beatdown? This is monstrous behavior. In true, safe, but kinky BDSM, you're supposed to care about your submissive partner. And personally, I think Tate is a sadistic, horrific, pathetic excuse for a human that is calling his disgusting behavior a kink. If he actually cared about women, he'd tell his audience that he genuinely wants to be careful, assure them that he has safe words or some kind of precautions, but he doesn't. The safety of his partners does not matter to Tate. But hey, in case you need more evidence of this, he also tweeted a year later that women should bear responsibility for being raped in the rise of the Me Too movement. In fact, Tate doesn't just believe women should bear responsibility for being sexually assaulted, but he thinks that when women are abused, it should also be easier for the person responsible to get away with it. That's actually the reason Tate gives for why he moved to Romania in the first place. He also enjoys the corruption there for another reason, but we'll get into that in just a moment. Lucky for you, Tate, thanks to the system that benefits corrupt abusers like you, you've escaped having to bear a prison sentence. In terms of the abuse accusations, Andrew Tate gives a specific example to his followers in the form of a story about an ex-employee. See, back in the day when Tate left kickboxing, he wasn't sure about what to do with himself. He allegedly had five girlfriends at the time, and he flew them all out to London to live together and webcam for him, making him a glorified pimp. Not all of his girlfriends wanted to do this, but two did stay behind. Soon, the business grew until it became a real moneymaker. At the height of his webcamming venture, he had over 75 women working for him in four locations, earning over $600,000 a month. When he started out, it was just with a couple girlfriends that really cared about him. They weren't in it for just the money. They wanted to be there for Andrew, or so he says, because this is his narrative. But as his employee base grew, so did the number of women who were in it solely to get rich, which is frankly understandable. After just researching this one episode, I find Andrew to be quite insufferable, so I'm not surprised that the webcam models he hired weren't in it because they liked him. But I digress. One woman that had been working for Tate earned about $25,000 per month all by herself. So she knew Andrew didn't wanna fire her. So according to him, she tried to get away with things. In one instance, she supposedly drunkenly vomited onto his bed. When Tate told her to clean it up, she refused. So he threw her things out the window and kicked her out. End of story. Or at least he thought it would be. Tate claims that this disgruntled employee went to police and made a false accusation of assault. The police burst through his door and questioned him. And in that moment, Tate knew he wanted to move somewhere else. Someplace where it would be easier to run a questionable sex service out of his properties and throw women onto the street. And look, if he wanted to fire her, that's one thing but dumping all her personal belongings out of a window and refusing to pay her her last month's salary. I have a hard time believing that their relationship was professional in any way based on his own story. And Andrew, I know you're supposed to make yourself look good on podcasts, right? Instead, I just feel bad for any woman that has the misfortune of having to share the same air as you. When you dismiss or fire an employee, one of the things you don't do is one, withhold their final month's salary. That's illegal in most states and countries from my understanding, but two, you don't throw away their personal belongings. That one makes absolutely zero sense. To throw away someone's personal belongings definitely shows you have some kind of malicious intent on a personal level. It means you personally feel harmed and hurt by this and you couldn't keep it professional. And if this was just a professional relationship, then again, why do that? So it just seems to me that there was absolutely something personal there and you just wanted to give her a final poke in the eye to be like, fuck you, bitch. And uh, you told this story and this is your recollection. 
It just makes you look really weak. Like imagine that, a man who can't control his big professional emotions to run his big successful business. <laughs> who could have thought? Anyway, <laughs> off to him and his brother and they go to Romania. Now, around the time the brothers arrived, they grew this business into an OnlyFans agency where Tristan claims that he has the biggest girls on OnlyFans working for him. Personally, I think the brothers are just pimps. I mean, hey, if these women want to go into sex work, that's fine. But it sure doesn't actually sound that way either. Anders bragged that about half the women he dates end up doing sex work and becoming an employee for him. And he's literally moving these women to Romania where he knows and enjoys the fact that it's harder for them to be taken seriously. Very normal, healthy relationships, and definitely, again, the person who should be teaching other people about relationships. The vast majority of people I'm in a relationship with end up being sex workers for me. That's just part of it. Yeah, so, okay. Seriously, especially in cases of reporting sexual assault. Tate also claims that he doesn't let his girlfriends leave the house, which, again, doesn't really make any of this look consensual. If they really like being with him so much, then how come you have to practically hold these women hostage in your home? And also just what a pathetic excuse for a supposed good boyfriend. What kind of partner puts their significant other in danger like that? Andrew Tate paints himself as this great alpha male, but what kind of man has to survive off of money that their girlfriend makes through webcamming? You fucking cuck. <laughs> He's so big and so strong that he can't earn it himself. Like, wow, what a boss babe. Now that is unless, of course, maybe, you know, he isn't such a big strong man to earn it himself. I also doubt that he gave anyone their fair share in these businesses because in various clips, Tate's been heard telling his followers that if his girlfriend were to partake in sex work, he's entitled to a cut of the profits since she belongs to him. Mm. If a woman is going out with a man, she belongs to that man. That's his woman. So she wants to do OnlyFans. She owes him some money because she's his. And the intimate parts of her body belong to him because they're in a relationship. And if she wants to sell those, he has a stake in those intimate parts of her body. But sure, Tate says he doesn't believe women are his property. He just thinks that they and their bodies belong to him. Like, does he not know what the definition of what property is? Like, he's literally referring to them as property. Then, you know, that being disgusting notwithstanding, she's totally right. Like, honestly, if you're such a, like, self-made man, you can do whatever you want, you've got the secrets to success, then you go out and do the sex work videos. You go on a webcam and jerk off 12 times a day, see how easy that is, and see if you can make all that big money. Instead of being like, I'm going to exploit a bunch of other people who uh, are in romantic relationships with me, and then uh, basically take their money while they do all the work and just sit back and tie and collect it? What the fuck are you? And hell, he doesn't even do a good job earning his living off of the backs of these girlfriends or these women because the brothers have admitted that the women they hire that often boy earn Ray, money by you. telling fake sob stories to their clients. Tristan apparently told the Sunday Mirror that it's all a big scam and no one cares. It's their problem, not mine. Although a lot of sources reporting on this are tabloid, so I understand they're not exactly the most trustworthy, the updates of what's been coming out around Tate's Romanian home are genuinely disturbing. When investigators went to their home to rescue the captive women, they uncovered the webcamming business the brothers run. Some of the women living in the home had tattoos that read owned by Tate, and they referred to the Tate brothers. So fucking branding, fucking branding human beings. As masters. Oh, and remember that 21 year old that was seen getting pizza? She was identified as Emma Gabby, and she claimed that Tristan Tate told her that if she left, he would find her and hurt her. Plus it's not as if she could have easily left on her own free will. This house is full of surveillance cameras, multiple weapons, and a former performance boxer guard standing out front. No charges have been filed against the brothers yet, but that is a big yet attached to the end there. But hey, maybe you like Andrew Tate. Maybe you think that exploit- Well, I mean, the fucked up thing is he admitted on camera that he greases cops, so if he can just buy his way out of this because Romania is so corrupt and I can buy anyone I want, then is he actually gonna face any justice for that? Getting women and potentially placing them in danger is in fact super man- and what else is fucked up is like, yeah, like people are saying in chat, like sex work can be difficult work. So not only is it difficult work, but you've got these complete asshole fucking creeps who are looking to exploit you in the midst of all that. In that case, the war room might be just for you. Oh God. The war room is a club that is, as Danny Gonzalez so eloquently puts it. Kind of just seems like one super long bachelor party for men whose wives have already left them. The War Room is supposedly a club full of members that have achieved freedom in the world of slavery. It sounds vague mm. as hell because it is. Also, I love how they say the members have achieved freedom, but the picture next to this quote shows a group of men with their faces blurred, dressing and standing the same. Like yeah, real talented, unique individuals there. So Cold free shit. and so tough having to blur their faces. 
Now, it costs over 4,000 pounds to join and learn to be an individual that, you know, dresses in an identical suit to the other members. The website doesn't exactly describe what you're paying for either. On his channel, Tate Speech, Andrew says that you'll get tips and tricks to earn more money, meeting with other members and live streams from Tate's visits to the club. So I guess for thousands of dollars, you can watch Tate have fun at a club? It sounds like a great investment. I love how the video also has all this epic music under it while members of this club are just sitting around someone's house looking bored while Tate <laughs> and a few other guys lecture them about God knows what. And that sounds like real beta male shit to me, paying another man to have fun at a club, like just saying. <laughs> it's also not as if the people Tate hangs out with are great guys either. Have you heard of the names Mike Cernovich and yes. Ollie Alexander? Yes. The former helped spark Pizzagate and the latter was an organizer for the January 6th insurrection known as the Stop the Steal leader. It's not really surprising Tate aligns with these beliefs. He has some extremely right-leaning values too. But I find it ironic that he'd associate with someone so anti-trafficking that they make up conspiracy theories about it while Tate himself has been accused of- Loving the use of local lingo. This is like a masterclass in reappropriating a lot of the terms that they use and then using it against them. I'm actually loving seeing it and how it's been delivered so far. Trafficking. I like, oh shit, does this make us betas? Oh no, oh fuck. Tried to find some firsthand experience about the war room to see if anyone reviewed it and could shed some light as to what it was actually doing. After all, it's supposedly been around since 2018, so they should be pretty established. Blogs that talk about the war room say that it'll turn you from a worm into a man of genuine means and purpose. But the only way they describe doing this is by linking you up with other successful men from the same club. Uh, According to the reviews, this makes it a mix of people who found success and those, those that are, are the still two on wolves the journey inside learning all men. from others. A worm. Truthfully, I don't give a shit if Tate wants to make a big expensive club for him and his loyal friends and followers. It sure as hell seems scammy to me, but it's not even half as scammy as the MLM he has attached to it. Something called Hustlers University. And that's right, boss babes and hunbots, we've got a rare male MLM on the table. Hell yeah. For the low, low price of just 50 bucks a month, you can buy, and drum roll please here, access to the Discord server. <laughs> And no, I'm not kidding. It's like Tate's more expensive, less reputable version of Skillshare on a Discord server. In this beautiful, lovely Discord server, you can learn about stocks, crypto, freelancing, and even copywriting. Tate has a few professors he's hired to tell you about each one, but those that have actually tested their advice have been disappointed. One financial YouTuber, Sean Solano, took the professor's advice for a few days and found that they lost 88% of the money that he put in with a single call. Whereas when he did his own thing, Solano was up by about 40% within the same time frame. He concludes his video by saying that even though some of the beginner terminology and advice makes sense, if you follow these professors, you'll likely walk away with nothing. Whether you think of this like a Mary Kay or it works for insecure lost men, a load of crap, or genuine legit advice about stocks and crypto, though few seem to fall into that latter camp, it doesn't really make a difference for Tate. The main point certainly seems to be about just giving him money. Since it was founded in 2021, allegedly over 60,000 people have joined, meaning he gets over $3 million per month from their monthly subscription costs. Although I do need to note that that number is actually currently estimated to sit at around 100,000, giving him closer to 5 million a month. But don't you worry, boss babes, you can get a piece of that pie too. Because if you join now, you can get an affiliate link. And from there, if you sign people up, you'll get a commission too. Aww. And seeing as there's no actual product aside from giving members advice, I actually fail to see how this is anything but a pyramid scheme. And in fact, it's pretty damn close to the exact definition. It's yeah, no, no wonder it actually, that yeah. people are calling it an MLM for lost men because it feels like you must have hit a new low to take this guy seriously. I get called Morpheus all the time in my DMs. Of course, Tate promotes Hustlers University as a way that you can make money and eventually join War Room. So if you pay for random advice from internet strangers long enough, then you can pay thousands for random advice from real life strangers. What's not to love, right? Well, aside from his incredibly unclear and sketchy business, Andrew is the last person someone should go to for financial advice in any way. Tate doesn't make his money honestly or legitimately, and he's actually proud of that. He's told the world that he owns casinos in Romania, and in 2020, he refused to shut down because of COVID. He bribed everyone from the police force to parliament saying that everyone needed to stay open. So for I was open for like the first month with bribes. But the bribes kept coming and getting more expensive. So eventually he shut his doors. One of his casinos was doing all right for itself before lockdown because he was competing with another casino and Starbucks nearby. 
According to Tate, his casino would offer free coffee to lure people in with the premise of, why would you go pay $5 for coffee? You can come get free coffee with me. Gamble your five bucks, you might get lucky. This isn't a bad idea from the perspective of a casino owner, truly. But running his business during a pandemic that he doesn't believe exists, grossly overpricing advice from strangers on the internet, and creating a pyramid scheme? I think I'd rather go with a financial planner. Thanks though. But speaking about earning an honest living, I'm gonna go ahead and place today's sponsors right here. I know it seems a little kind of clunky, but I promise you. <laughs> sponsors are always. Uh, this is the Illuminati channel. Go subscribe to her. She does great stuff, you know, taking down all these scam artists. And at the same time, she also sells candles, I do believe. So if you're someone who already buys candles, why not get your but candles from and the support the show? from the perspective of a casino owner, truly. But now look, Andrew Tate is a joke. Tate may think he's special, but the only thing he really is is a special snowflake. He has the stereotypical traits of toxic masculinity, motivational speakers, and con man masquerading as entrepreneurs all wrapped into one little cute pathetic package. If he didn't have such a massive following and hadn't genuinely harmed people, he might be a funny joke, someone to laugh at. Instead, he's just a bit sick and twisted. Still, Tate's been making the rounds on Twitch lately, promoting Hustlers University. One of the most well-known of these streams is with Aiden Ross, which got hundreds of thousands of live viewers. Throughout the whole thing, Aiden seems to cling to Tate's every word, promoting him as an authority figure to his impressionable audience. Wait, Aiden Ross is like 100K Andy? What the fuck? The one who was asking all those ridiculous questions the whole time, like just in interjecting no matter what anyone was talking about and being like, do you guys believe in angels or what's, what's your stance on that? Hey, I, I know we're talking about how uh, this might be uh, like a scam and stuff like that, but I think it really is a good way to segue into my next question. What are your thoughts on evolution? Do, do you think evolution is real, Hassan? God damn. On the other hand, he's also been debating well-known streamers like Hassan. Whether or not you actually agree with Hassan, some good points have been levied against Tate, like how he completely and utterly denies reality for his own anecdotal experiences. A good example here is that Tate says that women are terrible drivers, but when no, confronted so with funny. hard evidence that says that men are actually statistically worse, he just digs his heels in and just insists that in his own life, it's the opposite. Now, perhaps that's true. That could be the reality for Tate specifically, but that doesn't mean the evidence and studies that say otherwise are lying either. While I'm glad that people are finally speaking out against him, myself included, he's still getting more and more signups with every single online debate he does. According to Tate, that sometimes amounts to as many as three to 4,000 people each substantial live stream. As he gains notoriety and students under Hustlers University, he's gaining more influence and finding more people that believe in the garbage he's spewing. So what exactly is this garbage that he's spewing exactly? I see people asking why, and because as a number of people pointed out, his Alex Jones-like persona has appeal regardless if he's factually incorrect a lot of the time. If you're watching someone and that person is kind of acting in the way you like and is doing this kind of like, well, he's speaking truth to power. He keeps, you know, uh, trying to throw what Hassan's saying right back at him. Hassan's like, oh, what, uh, talking about facts and statistics and data and all this kind of stuff. Uh, meanwhile, my man here is just straight up being like, you know what? This is just the truth. He's just straight up saying it. It's what we're all thinking. He's just saying out loud that women are worse drivers. And I've like, I, I knew that to be true already. And he's saying it out loud. We don't need to muddle the waters with all these kind of like, you know, facts. Let's take a look, shall we? In one of his videos about women that are baffled by cheating, he says that unless you obey your man and quote, suck dick on demand, then you shouldn't be confused as to why your man cheated in all. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna get into that one sec, but that's why I've said before, it's a very hard uphill battle sometimes for, you know, people on the left or those who wanna like adhere to the way things actually work, you know, science, data, statistics, all that kind of stuff. Because at the end of the day, to sit there and have to be like, okay, well, if we look at all the studies and these are pretty, uh, you know, prominent globally, it would seem and appear to be a trend that men on average get in more accidents than, like, the other person doesn't be like, nah, dude, nah, ladies be driving shit. And then like a lot of people watching it will just be like, oh, <laughs> all right, what's that guy about? AndrewTate.com. Oh, he's got a, he's got a course. He can teach you things, cool, neat. Cheating scenarios, 100% of the time, it's always on the female, he says. He also refers to women as bimbos in this video too. So, you know, that's great. The truth is, I don't know who hurt yeah, this squares, sad little man, but he has such an unhealthy level of sexism and toxicity that he's essentially become an idol within the incel community. I'd go ahead and confidently say that that's not a good look, but it's how he makes his money, exploiting women and taking advantage of the men that worship him. 
In another strange, loud, and self-congratulatory rant, Tate tells his subscribers that only women should cook. And if you're broke, the last thing you should do is spend time cooking. You're broke, you're fucking poor, he shouts, insisting that in the time you spend cutting onions, you should be learning a new skill to be rich. And I don't know oh, what don't skill eat. he's talking about. Maybe a skill like kickboxing or piano. I mean, his logic is so flawed here that I almost feel stupid for arguing against it because it's nonsensical. It seems like he's trying to purposely not understand. Like Andrew knows that cooking meals at home can be more cost effective, right? That people have to feed their families and themselves, right? Or does he not understand that? Does he not understand that cooking is a skill in of itself and it can be a very monetizable and profitable one too? Plus, it doesn't necessarily take that long. And some people also find it relaxing to end the day rather than, you know, shouting at a video camera for six minutes about how poor people shouldn't cook. Like it's, it's asinine, his arguments are crazy. Your time needs to be dedicated to world conquest. There's no time to prepare food. You can order food cheaply and healthily. You can order a bag of rotisserie chicken and salad for like four bucks. <laughs> How much could banana possibly cost, Michael? $10. <laughs> or the other option, according to Tate, is to instruct a female to provide sustenance. And just how weird is that? Like seeing someone preparing a meal, just shout the line, your time needs to be dedicated to world conquest. Like, does he hear himself? <laughs> I know he doesn't, but I do. Like, it's ludicrous. So, like, it's- Yeah, be a man, starve. Kid movie supervillain-esque. It's get just, nutrition. It's laughable. But don't worry, females, we're allowed to cook. I guess we're not supposed to be worried about world domination or whatever, but all right. But as per usual, there's always more. Tate also believes that there's no point in talking to women unless you're going to have sex with them, that therapy is in action and ruins a person, that therapists don't want their patients. So how do you interact in everyday life? How do you accomplish anything? How do you order food, Andrew Tate? I'd like to ask that. Do you sit by and you're like, uh, no, we got to find a server who's got a massive tits. Yeah, that one over there. Yeah, bring her here. Oh, oh I can't eat. To get better. And of course, he's cool pushing his dogs around by their neck on camera Aww, when they're clearly asking for you. pets. I'd go ahead and say it's pretty obvious that Tate needs some serious therapy, but he just doesn't believe in it and thinks depression isn't real. It's just a state of mind. So I guess there's really no point in helping this loser anyway. He even argues therapy itself is detrimental and killed Robin Williams, which mm. is extremely insulting and dense. And I just don't even have the time to unpack that honestly. Like you can unpack that one in your spare time. He's even taunted a comic book artist, Rosenberg, because his son needed surgery for a cerebral palsy. Mm. Rosenberg set up a GoFundMe and Tate asked him, quote, do you feel like a failure that the amount you need to help your own son is less than a quarter than I spent on one of my five cars? I will help you if you ask. And now right now, all of you reading this, you're like, that's fucking revolting. What a disgusting human being. How is this guy popular? There's other people who see this, especially people who may be like downtrodden or like, you know, hate themselves or hate life who see this and like, oh, fuck, yeah, look at this dude. He's fucking trolling people in real time. This is fucking awesome. It's nothing to me. Your comic books have failed, but I am a success. Ask nicely and I'll save your son. And just look how manly and impressive he is, making fun of the parent of a sick child. You know yeah, no, that's that's definitely alpha behavior. Just dangling a child's life in your hands for fucking your own amusement. Yeah, alpha shit, bro. You know, when I think of super manly men, I actually think of people that bully parents with sick children. Like, how did he know? How did he know? Like, Tate, my dude, you say that wasting your time cooking a meal is stupid, but you've got time to pull this kind of shit? Are you just so pathetic that you have to demand parents of sick kids to grovel to you? Like, wow, my yeah. panties are so moist right now just <laughs> watching you demean a parent with a sick child. Wow, like what's next? Are you gonna start visiting hospice patients too? Are you gonna go ahead and tell them that it's actually their fault for being there? Like, wow, that's so manly. You know, maybe next you could go to a homeless shelter and tell the people that if they beg hard enough, you'll put them up in a hotel. Wow. This at least certainly seems like his idea of fun. But here's the real question after all of this. Is there anything redeeming about Andrew Tate? Well, let's see. He's beaten women and consistently refers to them in a dehuman- Yeah, I think this is the most savage Blair's ever been on one of these episodes. And yeah, I am so here for it. It's been fucking glorious. Organizing manner in just about every context possible, claiming to own them and even branding them in some cases. He earns money dishonestly and knowingly takes advantage of the women and fans around him. His luxury vehicles and houses are largely attained with their hard labor, not his. 
for all Andrew's talk about how important it is to be a high quality person and assign value to people based on looks and wealth, I consider him to be as low quality as possible and also kind of a cuck. Can we as a species <laughs> return this one somehow, please? <laughs> but with all of that being said, uh, and like, it's true. Andrew Tate hates himself and you, and you being both men and women. I'm assuming trans people as well, non-binary people. I'm sure he says horrifying things about them. But like, he hates men in that he's willing to take advantage of them, and he's also willing to transform them into just as horrifying pieces of shit as he is, just as miserable as he is. He's miserable and wants to make everyone else miserable in the process. Hates women clearly because he's one of the most sexist, misogynist assholes working on the internet and raking in tons and tons of cash, not to mention the alleged human trafficking, multiple instances of beating women, Women, uh, multiple instances of taking advantage of women as sex workers rather than just doing sex work himself or having some kind of fair equitable system where they have a union or work a co-op. Nah, not for this fucking beta cuck at the end of the day. So yeah, everything she has said completely 100% true and should not be a role model for anything. Not even taint, not even taint. He does not deserve the taint does not deserve that. In fact, I'd like to apologize formally to taint and take this out of the title because he's too good for that. There you are. We've restored Andrew Tate's cult as it should be. Also, I think every single one of you should probably go uh, follow and subscribe to the Illuminati because she does uh, she does really good videos uh, on these topics and has been has pretty pretty good, you know, I, I would say, you know, we are a snark snarky mob. This is true. We, we are first and foremost quite snarky. We are proud of our snarkiness, you know. Do you enjoy the surfs but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs? Many are saying this. Well, we've got the solution for you. It's the Surf Times in podcast form. Available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free. Just like the podcast. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just, we are prepared to embark on a mighty jihad in your name. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are but your humble jester, attempting in vain to get you to laugh. To our valiant knights of the round table, Benji Arney, Tech Tink, Earth Human, Tony, DM Rivera, Resident Scarecrow, Sir Nickus, Mayred, Cheryl Alvarez, Ruby Kelly, Brandon, Words Greenwood, It doesn't matter what I believe, it only matters what I can prove, Hagbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariane McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, Coulter Smith, Jenna Tao, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, The Tim Caucus, Multimondi, Trevbot, EXE, Brian Ephraim, Lemmy101, Anthropophojack, Saren42, Catherine, Ramona Costa, Incosin, Agent NDN, Violent Orchard, Political Puppy, La Media Panza, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our mugs and salute our brave heroes off to another glorious conquest.